Good day, hacksters. It's a wonderful Friday um, because we have something new in the studio and it is something that I think will be of interest to many of our viewers. Okay, so let's jump in. This is the Neo Sensory Buzz that we're about to unbox, as far as I know. <laughs> it is a device from Neo Sensory that is uh, it's basically a bracelet that enables you to perceive sound and other sensors through haptic feedback on your wrist and you can perceive various different things at the same time uh, it helps it was designed i believe originally actually as a, a device to help people who uh, have hearing impairments and so you can sense different types of sound you can uh it would help you recognize people's voices and things like that recognize your own name being called uh all kinds of cool stuff like that you can build your own machine learning uh, applications with this to make it recognize, for example, different types of animal noises, or if water is boiling, or if the tap is running, or things like that. Uh, so it really has a vast potential as a sensory augmentation device, and it's the focus of our new contest with Edge Impulse and Neosensory. Edge Impulse, as you may be familiar from previous videos, is a a uh, platform that makes it super easy to develop your own machine learning models and load them onto microcontrollers. And then paired with this uh, haptic feedback band, it has an incredible potential as a, poten <laughs> as a platform for recognizing all kinds of different sensors. In fact, they have a couple of examples already up. This one I was looking at before, the temperature sensing wristband with neosensory buzz, uh, as well as an invisible light wristband for sensing uh, near infrared and ultraviolet light which is outside the visible spectrum but you could make it the tangible spectrum with this device so let's get the box open in the meantime uh if you want to check out more i have put links in the description to this video as usual to neosensory.com where you can learn more about the buzz specifically you see these four haptic motors here we'll take a look at it in the meantime and also the arduino sdk uh so you'd be using basically Bluetooth to hook up these two devices together, whatever whatever hardware platform you're using to build your interactions and the Neosensory Buzz, uh, which includes anything that's compatible with the Adafruit Bluefruit library. Okay, on to the actual object. So this is the box I got in the mail. I'm a little confused right now because I haven't really opened it up all the way. And there is some kind of a cardboard box thing going on here that I don't quite understand. Uh, it's got some plastic wrap on it. Uh, I actually have <laughs> I have this Adafruit clue here along the side just to, for us to look at later because that's one of the compatible boards. But let's, uh, yeah, take a look at this. What's in this box? I pull it up and it seems to be, okay, so it's a whole separate cardboard thing, but it's got these directions on it for some reason. And they say, fold the front panel up toward the back panel. There's something... Slide a single device under the film? If shipping the devices... Oh, this is just FedEx! <laughs> this is just FedEx's instructions. I thought it was some kind of like a phone interact integration thing because it's got this phone here and you can like write applications for your phone that uh, hook up your Bluetooth stuff to the neo sensory but it's actually just shipping information okay what is is this for like shipping sensitive things or something or something like fragility packaging or something anyway here's the buzz <laughs> uh feel sound as vibrations mm. beautiful so what do we have here? Charging cable included, water resistant, which is good because I wash my hands a lot these days. Uh, you have a dedicated app on the iOS and Google Play stores. Learn how Buzz works. It picks up sounds around you. Sounds are translated into patterns of vibration around your wrist. So this is the default interaction. It has built in this uh, sound sensing function. Uh, be more aware of the sounds around you. So you've got alarm clocks, music, phone calls, babies crying, ambulances, uh, doorbells, and things like that. So these are things that you can sort of do already. And then you've got some information on it. Ooh! Well, we love this, obviously. Already with this color, they've got to win with me. <laughs> do, 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 do. It's the moment of truth. Meet Buzz. This looks like a pretty out-of-box experience. Uh, warranty guide. Anything else in here? 
do, 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 do. Nope, just a bunch of languages. Cool. Um, do I pull on this tab? I want to, I really want to like, this is clearly very thoughtfully designed and I want to explore it to its full potential. So we're going to do that. Oh, it's just for lifting it up. Okay, so we lift it up and it says, to get started, download the Neosensory app. I guess I should have done that already, <laughs> but I didn't notice that. I got too distracted by all the pretty hardware projects. So, you know, my bad. Ooh, it's got a nice uh, tactile rubber feel. You've got volume up and down or intensity up and down buttons. I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, you've got a little button on the side, which may or may not actually start it up running. And then there should be a charging cable somewhere, but we may not have that. That's fine. Is it a US micro USB or something? We'll figure that out later. The closure looks very nice. Infinitely adjustable. That's very cool. So not only can you adjust it with these guys, but also with this. Oh no, actually it's, it's quantized. It's quantized to these sizes, but there's a large variety as you can see. And then on here, we have your four haptic motors embedded in this strap here and information. Okay, so that's USB-C, that's easy. And then let's see. I kind of wish that I had downloaded the apps already so I'd have something cool to do <laughs> to try out. But I'll, I'll do a little uh, try out video later on. Let's see, is it charged at all? Any luck? No, that's okay. Uh, but it looks like this is the... Oh, no, here we go. Huh. <gasps> it buzzed. It's buzzing. Ah. Uh, wait. Oh, it's doing it. <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> it's, uh, it's making noise or it's buzzing when I talk. That makes total sense, but it's somehow really gratifying. It's like... There's some human thing where we like to perceive our own influence in the world. And so hearing the sound of my own voice, it's like it's like being an egomaniac, kind of. It's like, if you already love the sound of your own voice, now you can feel it even more. <laughs> um, this reminds me of a few other devices, actually, that I've pulled up as tabs. But uh, some of the cool... This is so distracting. Imagine that every time you're trying to do like a spiel, you're trying to do uh, like talk about something sort of off the top of your head and keep things straight in your mind. And at the same time, like every time you speak, something buzzes on your wrist. <laughs> it's a really fascinating experience. Um, oh, I can use this box as an amplifier. Here, look, when I talk, do, 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 do. can I? Does this box work as an amplifier? I'm going to hold it up to the mic and see if you can hear it. No, I need like a better amplifier sounding board kind of thing. What about this? <laughs> we will get to the actual uh, more stuff about the platform in a minute, but I just wanted to share with you what this feels like. Um, can you hear the buzzing? There should be a sort of like low hum buzzing sound when the, uh... okay. This is way, this is like Alex Candy here right now because I'm so, into transhumanism, transhumanism type things and wearable tech. And it's, I could spend like half, half an hour just like hooking this up. And I can't speak anymore because it's, it's so distracting. But it, like, you know, obviously you could adjust it to respond to anything. Having it respond to your own voice is not necessarily the, the use case. Um, obviously if other people were here talking, then I would hear, feel them as well. Uh, but as it is, it's just this sort of really weird sensory loop where uh, every time I try to say something, I get this uh, haptic feedback, which actually is an interesting, um, they've found that you can actually jam someone's brain by feeding their own voice back to them. Uh, I'm just putting it on the microphone now <laughs> so you can you can hear the haptics. If you feed someone's voice back to them like a microsecond later with a little bit of delay, it actually jams their brain so that they can't think anymore or talk. So anyway, all right. I'm going to turn this off because it's very, very interesting and distracting. Oh, it's got a nice little... Okay, so we've got... It does a little startup buzz and then it does a little shutdown buzz. That's very nice. Okay. 
So. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear to the rescue with Buzz Alex. <laughs> okay. So, um, I wanted to show you the main page. You can explore that on your own. The Neosensory Arduino SDK, I think, is one of the most interesting things. They have this whole excellent tutorial linked in the description that uh, you can use to build your own Arduino interactions like we were talking about. So here's everything you need to know about the Neosensory Arduino Bluefruit Software Development Kit. It, is, uh, it uses the Adafruit Bluefruit library to communicate with things over Bluetooth. So anything that's compatible with that library, you can use to talk to your Neosensory uh, device. And you can find the list of Adafruit's uh, compatible NRF52 boards here. Uh, this is why I pulled out the Adafruit Clue because it is a really cool little board which you can already hook up. There's also the Circuit Playground Blue, Blue Fruit. Their tutorials are mostly based on a feather shaped board, so an Adafruit Blue Fruit LE board. Um, and then there's the Itsy Bitsy, there's the Metro NRF 52840 Express. The main thing is that it works with this one particular chip from Nordic. Uh, and then you've got the Particle Xenon. Uh, these ones are included but are not officially supported in the library. And they give you full instructions on how to uh, install that. So that's linked from this main article, which is very comprehensive. I have to give them props on this article. It's a, They've got a billion links, and I love it because I'm the kind of person who constantly opens new tabs to dive into whatever someone's talking about in a tutorial. Okay, there's more about the library here. Um, you've got SDK documentation. You've got a GitHub repo. You've got an example that comes with a library, uh, Neosensory Blue Fruit. Let's see, what does it do? Uh, connect your sensor of choice and decide how to represent that data on Buzz. Oh, I can't wait. This is going to be so much fun. <laughs> and in case you forgot, this is the basis of a new contest as well. So you could play around with this thing and also went up to $3,000 $3, in prices, which is ridiculous. Um, so there's the example project. Walks you through the code, which is really nice for me. I understand electrons a lot better than I understand uh, code words, <laughs> code, <laughs> uh, recommended materials, uh, you can pair it with a LiPo battery. Um, interestingly, this is one of the few Adafruit boards that includes battery charge re uh, circuitry, which is really nice. And then they've got their demo projects, which we looked at a second ago, and we're going to look at again. So the, here's the temperature sensing wristband with a neosensory buzz. They hook up uh, the buzz wristband and the blue fruit feather two uh, infrared thermometers, a lipo battery, a proto board, a battery switch, a, a switch, some headers and a watch strap. So really the only uh, things, the main things here are the blue fruit LE board and the infrared thermometers. And these could be any sensor that you desire. And then you solder everything together. They have a fun little backstory with Predator. They seem to be linking a lot to their founder's TED talk, which I'm sure is fascinating. Um, this is uh, sort of on sensory augmentation, which is a favorite topic of mine, so I'll probably watch it anyway. Um, and yeah, uh, it walks you all the way through, breadboarding out the design, then sort of soldering it together, attaching it to a wristband, and actually making it into something that's wearable. And then you end up with this cute little uh, temperature sensor thing with a couple of sensors going off in different directions and it looks pretty nice honestly like this looks kind of like um where's the other yeah it reminds me of this other breadboard wristwatch that we covered recently which is super cute just imagine a mashup of this one and the temperature one and you'd have like high geek fashion <laughs> um they include of course the code and they talk about uh they sort of walk that you through that which is super cool by mike brought a scientist no hate for scientists. Love scientists. It's just funny that it just says scientists, not like, you know, data scientists or like uh, human interaction, computer interaction scientist or whatever. <laughs> um, more info on sensory substitution and expansion in the human visible spectrum one. You've got this TED talk. I dove a little bit into the um, 
past history of this company because I was curious. Uh, back in 2016, they ran a, a Kickstarter in order to fund their first project, I believe it was. It could be their first one, um, which mapped it onto your torso. So this was more explicitly designed for people with hearing impairments to provide haptic feedback um, from audio. And they have a cool demo video here on Vimeo where uh, this guy's vest is lighting up in the same places where the haptic motors are going. So I recommend that, it's super fascinating. Um, and it's really fast. There's more info on the science in their Kickstarter, which I think is fascinating, if you want to deep dive into that. Then, oh yeah, so let's take a look at the actual contest because one of the prizes has to do with this Built for Buzz program, which is sort of like an accelerator a, that'll guide you through the process of turning your product project into a product. Um, so you can use it for biofeedback, body incorporation of other systems. They talk about using it as a haptic aid for people with autism by classifying the emotion of incoming speech, classify animal calls, and let users feel their sounds when walking through different environments. Oh, imagine like you're walking through um, some crunchy leaves and some people have lost sense in their feet. So you could get the sense of those leaves crunching. Uh, through your wrist, that'd be really cool. Uh, I'm fixated on Autumn right now, so, you know. Build an app that creates a companion tactile experience when a parent is reading a story to a child, recognize yoga poses and help yogis improve their posture and beyond. One thing that I love is feeling the bass in my sternum when I dance to music, and so that would be a really cool augmentation. I'd have to like mount it elsewhere, but that'd be very cool. Uh, so yeah, biofeedback, body incorporation of other systems, and for example, mapping systems measured from complex systems like a drone or a factory, so they become an extension of you. That's where you get into transhumanism. And then, of course, the original transhumanists, people with accessibility concerns, have always had uh, been at sort of the forefront of augmentations just to be able to live their lives and have a huge quality of life. So uh, accessibility is a massive category here. There is more on the process here. You can get $100 off, only available for November. And then we get, of course, to the prizes. So um, the first couple of these, the grand prize gets a hundred uh, or thousand dollars USD, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and eligibility for that built for buzz mentoring program that we just talked about where they sort of walk you through developing your project into a full blown consumer product. Uh, the second prize uh, listed here as well, the Edge Impulse Prize, is $300 value as well as having eligibility for that program. Um, Edge Impulse, as I mentioned, is a system that makes it really easy to build and implement your own machine learning models. So I've been messing around with this a little bit. It's very fun. Um, it's not intimidating. There is a lot of graphical interface uh, interaction you can um, download existing data sets to sort of help train your models for sound, for um, actually many of those uh, examples we listed before where you could lift, you know, detect if a kettle is boiling or something like that. Uh, but yeah, Edge Impulse is really friendly. Plus, if you use Edge Impulse, you automatically get, I think, 30 extra points in the judging for the general categories. And then also you're eligible for this Edge Impulse prize. So I would definitely recommend uh, checking that out. Judges' favorites, do, 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 audience favorite, and participation prizes. All qualified projects submitted before the cutoff date are eligible for participation prizes from the swag grab bag. Uh, you could get Edge Impulse and Neosensory sensory stickers, t-shirts, or signed copies of David Eagleman's book, Live Wired, which I assume is, again, a, it says the inside story of the ever-changing brain. Oh, candy. It's total, total nerd bait. What else have we got here? We had this cool breadboard which wristwatch. I recommend making your project look awesome because it is a wearable and uh, if you don't wear it, then there's no point really. Uh, check out the Edge Impulse page for a ton of existing projects that you could use for um, inspiration. For example, lots of these come from our previous contest with Edge Impulse, which is the Elephant Edge contest, uh, benefiting, basically protecting elephants from poaching 
It's a wildlife tracker. Uh, you can also use it for ecological conservation and things. So this is a really cool, cool contest that le yielded a bunch of edge impulse projects. So a lot of them are going to be ele elephant focused, but imagine you could make like an elephant human uh, communication device where you could sense different things the elephant was doing. Well, okay. Maybe you don't have a pet elephant. Maybe instead you want to make friends with other animals. Um, maybe you want to sense the health of plants around you. Look at this. You could tell how well your garden is doing with little impulses throughout the day. All kinds of stuff. Uh, I wanted to also mention a couple of other similar uh, projects that I've seen that are maybe relevant to your interests, if this is fascinating to you. But first, let's, let's go through the uh, resources here. So the final part of this page on the contest, this is the Edge Impulse and Neosensory Contest, is your resources. So there are a bunch of lists of resources for neosensory. <laughs> That's so cool, including the TED Talk and Edge Impulse. So for both of those, there's plenty of getting started materials and you can find them linked at the bottom of the contest. So now let's take a look at these other things. Here's uh, Music Not Impossible, which is something that we've talked about before. Uh, Not Impossible Labs is a an organization that does some really cool contests and things and their own developed uh, products and applications to help the world basically like take these impossible project problems and make them not impossible uh, so solving things for humanity to make things better for all of us and they have this cool vest so i wanted to point out that when i first heard about neosensory i was like oh it's like this this uh body mounted device where you can hear music through haptic feedback in your body and yes, it is similar to that, except for that it also has a ton of other things that you can do with it as well. You can hook up literally any sensor to this. It's not just for music. It's not just for voices. It's not just for anything like that. It's anything. Temperature, uh, visible light, classifying. I don't know. Uh, if you hook it up to a factory or a bridge or something, you could feel the... I could feel the wind blowing through the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, I could feel if something that I've mounted outside is behaving erratically, like uh, predictive maintenance for industrial systems, for example. You could see if um, get an alert through your wristband uh, if your uh, device or whatever is about to fail because it starts behaving erratically. You could even just... Okay, so one of the really cool things about sensory augmentation is that our bodies are incredible computational engines and sensory engines. There are things that we can learn from just being immersed in how a system feels, and you can turn anything into a feeling um, that we can't do just by looking at lists of numbers or whatever. This is one of the most fascinating things to me about transhumanism and incorporating uh, machines and human bodies together. So I've been messing with data sonification, which is a similar idea. You have a constant stream of information that's encoded in a different way. So it could be sound for data sonification. In this case, it's haptic feedback. And your body learns what's normal and learns, it actually maps these systems and learns to understand them as though they were part of your own body and your own senses. That's where the term sensory augmentation comes from. You're literally able to build new senses for yourself and you can sense anything in the world. I think that's incredible. And it has so much potential to make our lives better in ways that we haven't even imagined yet. Like what you would imagine senses for is way different from what I would imagine senses for. Like for me, it would be like leaves crunching or feeling the Golden Gate Bridge. But for other people, maybe it would be uh, more functional devices. Uh, maybe you would be, <laughs> I can't keep coming up with these things off the top of my head, but that's your job in the comments. Let's see. Mm. Arjit's thinking of making something for his grandpa. Yeah, what would you make for your grandpa? I'm super curious. Maybe you shouldn't say in the comments because maybe you should submit it to the contest. But yeah. <laughs> oh, happy Diwali. Exciting. Oh, Draco Corvus says, communication with my dogs. Or your dragons and crows, I guess, based on your name. <laughs> okay, so. One more thing on here. Um, 
The North Paw is something that the local hackerspace Noise Bridge uh, had an offshoot called Sense Bridge that was doing this kind of biohacking type stuff. And they developed something called the North Paw, which is a ring of haptic motors around your ankle or your wrist that basically helps you determine which way is north. The uh, haptic motor in the direction of north constantly vibrates. So that vibration will travel around your limb, your ankle or your wrist, depending on which way is north. And it turns out that you can develop an, in <clears throat> an inbuilt sense of the north direction from this. And you could do that exact thing with the neosensory wristband. Of course, it only has four haptic motors. It doesn't go all the way around. So it would be a little bit more complex to uh, you know, understand which direction is north from this. But that's another example of the kind of thing you could do here. Uh, all these things, uh, sensing, sensing music, sensing north, uh, that you've seen done in other applications, you could build that for this device and have a, uh, a wrist-mounted information feedback system. Oh, I'm going to do this right away. Uh, I kind of regret that this is an unboxing, and so I can't just hook it up right now because I'd probably take a while stumbling around and fi figuring it out. But let's see if anyone else has different ideas. Maybe something to help motorize muscles again who have lost that control. Oh yeah, I mean, that seems like it would take some hacking of the wristband, right? You could hook it up to, um, you can do muscle control with electronics but it tends to be less haptic focused and more just like delivering small electric shocks to your muscles. But then again, maybe there's other ways to motorize muscles that I don't know about. And there's a ton of research out there. Things are available more than ever. We have this vast access to scientific research that is at our fingertips. You can turn any of that into stuff that's mounted on your body and gives you vibrational feedback. Ah. I'm so excited about this um, and excited to see what other people build for this contest. I wanted to show um, you briefly, though, the Adafruit Clue, because this is one of the boards that is compatible with the um, Neosensory wristband with that Adafruit Blue Fruit um, library. So let's take a look at it. Adafruit Clue. And it has a bunch of utilities already for it. It has a ton of sensors built in, temperature, pressure, gyroscope, accelerometer, humidity, microphone. Uh, there's already a microphone on the neosensory band, but what else have we got? Mm, temperature and barometric pressure, altitude, uh, a proximity light color and gesture sensor. That could be really cool. You don't have to have this one mounted on your body either. Since they talk over Bluetooth, Notice how these two are not connected together. This is a standalone device, the temperature sensor. And then the neosensory wristband is a separate standalone device. These two don't have to be connected. You could have this mounted anywhere within Bluetooth range and then have that communicate to your wearable wristband, which I think ha has a ton of potential as well. Ugh. Plus, you have your quick and stomach QT connectors for adding uh, all kinds of modular sensors or Grove I squared C sensors. So much, it's almost overwhelming the possibilities that you have here if you combine the clue with the neosensory wristband. But also, of course, we want to poke you towards Edge Impulse because you get a ton of extra points in the contest if you do that. And I want to see more ways to integrate these things as well. Ooh. Hide and go seek play game to play with your dog or have that feedback during a scavenger hunt. That's brilliant. I love that. Of course, I love scavenger hunts. And you could have a, a little scavenger hunt feedback device where if you're hot or cold, then it would like vibrate along this end or that end, you know, start over here. And then as you get closer, it would like gradually move up over here and stuff. I'm also really curious to see the, the interaction design aspect of this SDK. Like how do you design the haptic feedback that you get from different uh, sensors. I don't know. I'm about to look it up. I'm very excited about that. OK. Um, yeah. Have the other sensor on your dog collar and sense where your dog is. So many, many pet focused uh, examples from this person, which I would love to see. <sighs> so 
That is the Neosensory Buzz wristband. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna wear this for the rest of the day just to hear the sound of my own voice. <laughs> well, I want to see what it sound, feels like when other people are talking to me as well. I wonder if I could tell the difference between people's cadences of speech. Like maybe if someone speaks very in a very clipped, sharp tone uh, with a lot of volume when they're upset. But maybe if they're speaking more like this, then they're super chill. And then I feel super chill because you're getting this like haptic feedback that's telling your senses to be like, everything's chill now. We can chill out. And maybe that's what we need for this um, for this time in our lives is um, just like, remember the feeling of ocean waves. <laughs> remember the feeling of rain on a car roof, you know, things like that. Actually, that'd be amazing. Yeah, okay, huh. I have to cut this off, but uh, go check out the contest. That's not it. <laughs> it's linked in the description. Um, Haxer.io slash contest slash Neo Edge. Of course, we have other contests going on as always, but uh, can't wait to see what people come up with. Enjoy uh, your weekend. <laughs>